Between 1946 and 1958, the United States detonated 67 nuclear bombs in the Marshall Islands' northern atolls of Bikini and Anahuaytac. At first glance, the Marshall Islands appear peaceful, ecologically healthy, and isolated paradise, where skies are blue, where corals had been able to thrive, where turtles, sharks, fish are all in abundance. But more than any other place, the Marshall Islands is a victim of the two greatest threats facing humanity, nuclear weapons and climate change. The convergence is most symbolically epitomized at the tomb, an unlined bomb crater on the island of Runet in Enoetak Atoll. This is where the United States buried plutonium and other remnants of nuclear testing under an 18-inch thick concrete cap 39 years ago. As sea levels creep higher in the Central Pacific, the tomb has begun bobbing up and down with the tides. The United States has no plan to prevent it from crumbling and spreading radiation even further across the nation's northern atolls. The crater site, arguably one of the most destructive physical scars of the Cold War, is deceptively peaceful. Nam Island, which is adjacent to the site and was blown in half during the Bravo operation, is home to fairy terns and giant coconut crabs and is a nesting site for sea turtles. Hundreds of just hatched sea turtles were seen spilling across the beach into the lagoon. Abandoned and crumbling concrete bunkers and twisted rebar snake through the coral beds. And at the bottom of Bikini's Lagoon, where the U.S. detonated the largest hydrothermal bomb it ever detonated, the Castle Bravo bomb, that's where a group of researchers from Columbia University have been studying the radiation left behind by the Castle Bravo and the other bombs. A team of professional divers took core samples from the bottom of Castle Bravo, at some point over 180 feet deep. So what are you reading? 3.6. 3.6. The research team went around different islands in the northern atolls to test the background radiation using Geiger counters. In June, the researchers revealed that part of Rongelop Atoll, one of 27 atolls in the Marshall Islands, is as irradiated as some of the most notorious nuclear waste sites on the planet, including Chernobyl and Fukushima. The other major threat is climate change, and few places are more vulnerable to its impacts than the Marshall Islands and other low-lying Pacific islands. The seas in the Central Pacific are rising, twice as fast as anywhere else on the planet. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change predicts sea levels could rise four to five feet by the end of the century, making the Marshall Islands, where the highest point is six feet above sea level, physically unlivable. In addition to rising sea levels, global warming has caused a rapid decline in healthy corals, including bleaching. When we visited the atolls last year, we saw dead and bleached coral across wide swaths of Bikini, Anahuaytoc, and Rongelop lagoons. The day after the hottest day on record for 2018, thousands of dead fish formed a black line along the high tide line of Bikini Island's beaches. The die-off of fish, clams, and other marine life is eliminating a traditional source of protein for the islanders, making them more dependent on imported and less healthy food. As the United States and the Marshall Islands begin negotiations for a new compact of free association, the Marshallese are hoping this new information from the Columbia University researchers will put them in a better place to begin negotiations as they move forward.